In all of the chaos and turmoil of MoviePass, the blockout dates, the lack of movie selection, the ever-changing plans, the annual pass holder lawsuit, what is the biggest question that has yet to be answered? Well, for many people, it's where the heck did this come from? Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net and shareholder in Helios and Matheson. And I have talked about a lot of the fundals of MoviePass, and there have been quite a few. Um, I'm, you know, this company was considered the savior of many people to the movies. They loved this thing so much until they didn't. And there's a lot of reasons why they didn't, some of it justified. But there was one question that people could never quite figure out and it bugged people a lot more than I personally thought it would, but it, it really became a big deal. And that was the invention of the, um, of the mar of the director of marketing. That's what it is. It was the director of marketing at MoviePass. As you can see, it's this cute little dog. I I don't know exactly what dog it is, but one day MoviePass users got this email with the picture of this dog and the email said, Woof, I'm Chloe, the director of marketing at MoviePass. I'd like to explain why from time to time you may have had a rough experience with us, but it turns out that I'm a dog and I can't talk. What I do know is that I see these humans working like crazy to make MoviePass better and better for you as fast as possible. They are so grateful for your membership and support while they work it out. We're listening, we're learning, we're changing. And that was a, uh, well, a lot of people did not take kindly to that. They have to keep in mind, this is a service that people were paying for. They weren't getting show times and they wanted answers from MoviePass. They wanted answers from Mitch Lowe, the CEO. There were even reports, I did a video on this, where Mitch Lowe was apparently just nowhere to be found for a few months. And so to get an email from a dog like that, that was a, well, it inspired a lot of really scathing articles to put it bluntly. But it appears that we actually have an answer for where the, the uh, barketer of MoviePass came from. And it's in this article from The Ringer titled, Do We Want to Be in Business? The Strange, Never-Ending Saga of MoviePass. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing. First of all, this is a very, very long article. And a lot of it is just general information. I do recommend you read it. I'm going to link to it below because there's a lot of very fascinating stories about what went through the minds of MoviePass heads in the last several months. Uh, specifically, they talk about the July 27th, which was the dark day of MoviePass where Mission Impossible... Uh, could not be seen. In fact, really nothing could be seen. And, you know, what happened with the credit being shut off, which wasn't quite what it appeared to be, it basically became a decision about whether they wanted to be in business or not, hence where the uh, headline comes from. And it's got some very interesting comments and some statements about things that happened. Mitch Lowe definitely in this article comes off as being a little bit more humbled in how he approaches business and all that jazz. So, who knows? And their plans for what the future is going to be. It's a very, very good article. But there is a cute little gem somewhere in the middle that actually um, addresses the um, the Barketer controversy. Which um, let's see. Let's see if I can find find it. In fact, uh, here's how I found it the first the first time time as I did this. So anyway. Um, here, it's like, it took the company a while to make this realization. When I mentioned the director of marketing who wrote a stunningly lighthearted email sent to MoviePass users in October at the absolute height of the company's dysfunction, Rode Ponzer, MoviePass's head of marketing, who had been sitting in on the interview as an observer, hangs his head. Quote, it was my second day, he says. Before Ponzer came on at MoviePass, the arrogance of the company's public persona made him sick to my stomach. He wanted to change that. My first slide that I put to the company was a quote by Roger Ebert. Empathy is civilization's most important asset. Half of the room didn't even know who Roger Ebert was. Oh, oh my, that, that offends me. I'm sorry, that just offends me. Sorry, Roger Ebert is a personal hero of mine. I, I became a film critic because of Siskel and Ebert. So. <laughs> to have to be in a boardroom where people primarily deal with movies and they don't know who Roger Ebert is, that's uh, granted he has passed for several years and uh, because most of his impact with the reviews he's writing and he's not writing them anymore, obviously. Well, 
that's kind of I guess it's only inevitable that people might eventually forget him, but oh, on a side note, that comment just hurts me. But continuing. As the public danced on MoviePass's recently dug grave, Ponzer hoped to recast the company in a far more humble light. I said, oh, sorry, the um, heater. Um, this is where we need to be. We have to send this email to everybody. It's the right time to say what we're really up to. We're listening, we're hearing, we're changing, which was totally true. It was at some point in this ideation process that Ponzer was introduced to his colleague's adorable terrier. The team who's young were like, were like, that's so fun, we should put that in an email, says Ponzer. I was kind of like, yeah, let's have some fun. I could not have predicted that that would be under a microscope. Mitch could have eaten interjects as Lowe rolls his eye. After all, Lowe was the face of this disaster. By October, he probably could have predicted that his company responding to app back blackouts and constantly changing terms of service with a low-level dog pun would backfire. He doesn't explain why he didn't step in at that moment, though it's implied that he was too busy and based on his demeanor, too worn down, putting out much larger fires. Such was the cycle of the movie pass dysfunction. So... You know how they uh, say that sometimes reality is, the, or the truth is much more anticlimactic than the story of it all? I mean, there were so many articles written about the um, director of marketing. I can't believe I keep forgetting the, that. You see, I, I didn't even take that much, I didn't think that much of it when it came out. I, uh, I kind of saw the email, and it was like... I mean, and here's the thing, I was posting movie pass videos pretty much every day when it came out, and I didn't even plan to make a video about that, but so many people contacted me about it, like said, hey, did you see this offensive email that I, I think I ended up making a video, but it wasn't one of my more passionate videos. I, I'm having more passion about the story behind the story than I do about the story. So anyway, th that's unfortunately all it was. Someone, there was a dog there at work. They were trying to send out an email saying, hey, we're listening instead. Hey, maybe we... Let's put a dog in there. It's cute. We can have a little pun. We can have a little fun with this. People would appreciate the fun, but people really weren't in the mood for that because I think they overlooked the, the thought that, um, well, people are paying for a piece of plastic that they can't use, essentially, because the app isn't working. The show times aren't there. I think at this point, when they sent this out, Either there were no showtimes at all, or it was such a limited selection, like that's when they had just started doing the limited movies, and they, you'd have like one mainstream movie, and then you'd have five indie films that you had to be in like LA or New York to be able to see. And even then, like, it wasn't a guarantee. Well, it's still not a guarantee. Like, I actually got Katie off. She's been on the limited plan all this time and not really using it much, so she's in a sense a um, movie passes ideal customer a payer who doesn't see movies, but we did recently cancel that account for her, and we got a new account with the middle tier because, you know, we have Oscar shorts and other moot foreign films to watch the next few months, so she has upgraded her plan. But anyway, I, I got a little off topic on that. I'm sorry, I do that sometimes. So anyway, the director of marketing, in my opinion, this is not the worst thing MoviePass has done. It was just, it came off as incredibly insensitive. But the story was, it wasn't meant to be insensitive. They thought you would find it cute. And I know there's gonna be like a lot of comments below like, well, MoviePass thinks a lot. Like, and yeah, that's true. But here's the other thing. And there is like a quote, there is a quote down here. And this is such a long article. This is why I have to do the search with the, um, <laughs> was the word finder thing. Um, you know, this, this was, here's the thing, um, because people were at one point, people have been saying like, well, MoviePass is a scam, it's this and that, and so of course that was going to look bad. And that's where I get a little annoyed. I get annoyed when people say that MoviePass was a scam, because it wasn't a scam, it isn't a scam. Here's what it, here's the thing, Etem gets a little fired up when you ask him what he thinks about people saying MoviePass was a grift. Thanks to a couple documentaries by Netflix and Hulu, the former of which MoviePass apparently considered acquiring... Hmm, interesting. Fire Entertainment is fresh on everyone's mind. It's completely wrong, he says. Is Amazon a grift when they send you a 250-pound bar barbecue at no cost if you pay $99 a year? Lowe speaks up. They lost money for, what, 20 years? Asks about this comparison. Hancock says it's a little like a bloke comparing himself to Jesus, you know, which 
Well, I don't like Amazon, so. The only reason anyone has issue with us is that eventually we failed. We failed to deliver the service we were trying to deliver. That is the key word. They failed to deliver the service. That's why people were upset. That's why they are still upset. Although, by the way, I have been you. I have used the um, Movie Pass middle tier, um, the twenty dollar a month. Uh, it's fifteen for some, but for, for me, it's twenty. And for Katie, it's eighteen. Despite us being in the same zip code for some reason, I don't know. But I've tried the new service and it works. It worked like a charm. Am I going to use all three movies every month? This month, this month I probably will. Next month, I'm not so convinced. But you know, the service is working again. And as long as they can continue, they're probably going to have to like deliver a solid product or at least a product that works for at least a year before they can really pull themselves out. In the meantime, they should stay low. And as for the director of marketing, well, this like, he's cute. I have to admit, he is very, very cute. You can't deny that. But I think people will forget about this at some point as well. Once the service actually starts working, once people start using it again, and I mean, who knows? They might not survive the year. I I don't know. I hope they do, but you never know at this point. But I think this will eventually be forgotten. But anyway, I of course want to ask what all of you think. Do you did you ever personally take offense to the director of marketing? And if so, why? What was your reasons? And in hindsight, was that worth getting so upset about? And of course. I know a lot of people who um, have canceled Movie Pass. Did any of you ever give Movie Pass's new plan a chance? And is it working for you? I'd love to know. So comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, but even this one dollar a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly, and you get access to exclusive Patreon blogs. And as always, blame responsibly. Have a good one.